Hi everyone, Comic Review here. This time we're viewing on the film Spy Kids. Now, as you know, Spy Kids was a 2001 spy action comedy film that was written, edited, and directed by Robert Rodriguez, whose film I did review, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So, I kind of decided to pick up Spy Kids sometime after reviewing Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And I remember as a kid watching the Spy Kids movies. And I think looking back at it, yeah, I would say the 2000s was that starting point of, of bringing back the whole spy genre. And when you had stuff like Totally Spies, Kim Possible, as well as Cody Banks, you could tell they were really trying to restart the whole spy genre. So the premise of the film is meant to follow two children, Carmen and Junie, who pretty much live their, their sort of average life with their parents. We kind of see how, yeah, Carmen kind of gets annoyed with her younger brother's behaviour and just kind of acts a bit like the sort of nagging older sister. And we kind of see how how Ginny does feel like a bit like an outcast and basically is this thrown into the story. And I kind of think when you've got the parents, yeah, I think when you've got Antonio Banderas' character, Greg Rolio, I think his character does work because, yeah, they make it clear that he does want his son to man up and does try to kind of get him to be a bit more like like the like a Cortez and I think when you kind of got the, the got Ingrid you can kind of tell that she does try to play the supporting role in the family we kind of see how yeah both the parents are kind of kidnapped which leads to Carmen and and Jenny to try and save their parents from a sinister plot and I think for the most part, I think the villains do work, because I think when you've got Fegan Floop, I think his character does work, because you can kind of tell he starts to kind of question if he's doing the right things. And you can kind of tell when he's got his sort of second-in-command, Minion, you can kind of tell Minion is more trying to make Floop do what he wants, and you can kind of tell Floop starts to kind of realise his own mistakes. And I think for the most part, I would say, yeah, the pacing does feel a little fast paced. Like, yeah, when you kind of got the brother character who's played by Danny Fiorito, who's meant to be Carmen and Jimmy's uncle, I think could have been handled better if he went along with the kids and maybe kind of having some regrets about separating himself from his family. And I kind of think, yeah, maybe we could have had some time with the family, maybe over a sort of dinner-like meal, maybe have the mum trying to get the family to be together as an actual family. But again, it's meant to be these sort of totally spies, sort of Kim Possible-like plot. And yeah, and when you kind of got the sort of gadgets, when you kind of got the sort of, like, Kim Possible or kind of totally Spies villain, I kind of think, yeah, Spy Kids, I think, was that starting point of the genre. It was meant to kind of restart and relight the whole spy genre. And I think, yeah, looking back at it, I know they did do three other sequels, known as Spy Kids 2, the Island of Lost Dreams, and in 2003, Spy Kids 3D Game Over, and then in 2011, Spy Kids All the Time in the World. So you can really tell Robert Rodriguez was really trying to keep the Spy Kids stuff still up a notch. And I think for the most part, I think it was the film that was trying to kind of relight that genre. And you can really tell Robert Re Rodriguez wanted to do something different. And I think relighting the spy genre was a good idea. So I think this film definitely deserves a thumbs in the middle. 
Well, it's got its good paces, but it's definitely got moments where it wants to do stuff, but it doesn't really know how to do it. So, Comic Viewer here, signing out.